Have I ever taken a Searing Blow after Act 1? Yes. I, I can think of one particular example. Why? Great question. Um, I had a Prismatic Shard as Watcher and a Lesson Learned. So I believe I took it in Act 3. And used Lesson Learned to upgrade it repeatedly. I think it was plus 17 when we died. I probably could have gotten it to plus 20 by the end of the run if I hadn't gotten killed. That's right, I guess I'll just die next turn. That's right, exclam, blasphemy vault. I don't think the searing blow is visible in that, uh, in that clip, but that is the run I'm talking about. Immortalized forever. I'm so glad that happened. In retrospect. Now that the pain has faded a little bit. Hmm. Well, this is probably not a searing blow, see. Well, I guess there could be one on this side. So, do we remove a card, take a common relic, 250 gold for a curse? Not usually something I advise, although in this situation you actually could get away with it, so to speak. You only have to carry that curse for one floor. What is the shop placement? Hello? That's too many stores. Although you might be able to reasonably take 250 gold into the early shop. I'm going to mark this path in red. I don't know that it's necessarily a good path. Um, yeah, there's not enough combats, not enough card rewards here, but you can buy cards. So it could be possible to take three elites and the burning elite going on this uh, red path on the right here. Something a bit more reasonable looking. Starts a whole bunch of combats, but then upgrade, elite, upgrade, upgrade, elite, upgrade. That's four rest sites, two elites in act one. That's pretty good, giving you a good upgrade basis for your deck. Going into guardian... Don't need to draft as much damage. We can go a bit block heavier. Yeah, the rest of that run should be somewhere on the Veil of Lord archives. Um, actually, since the clip has a date on it, you could match the date the clip was made to the dated shows from the archives, and that should let you find it. Lil Be Ill Beats, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Good morning, Vigilax. Are, would four rest sites be enough for Searing Blow? Yes, I think four is... You'd have to get the Searing Blow before the first rest site. But if you can get four guaranteed upgrades on it in Act 1, that's that's pretty good. Above four is excellent. So if you get five, six, or somehow, if you're really lucky, seven. Um, seven takes really exceptional circumstances. Um, you'll just absolutely destroy Act 2. Or the Act 1 boss. Like, you can one-shot Slime Boss if you've got a Searing Blow plus seven. Nah, maybe two shot. Anywho, I think for me this is a choice between trying the ambitious red path. I do like this red path a lot. This leads to a really strong at, um, run overall because you're up in terms of relics, you're up in terms of money, and you have the green key, so your pathing in future acts is a little bit more freed up. Only says two years ago. Oh, there's not an exact date listed. Dang. Do 
left on the red path. Oh, I see. Yeah, because we still get to fight this elite. You're right. Oh, yeah, that is three, um, three combats. Yes, that would be the better way to go. Actually, I like that quite a lot. Three combats before this first elite means we should be able to beat all three elites with uh, some consistency. We're getting more healing from the burning blood. You know, I don't usually take a curse for money, but I'm going to do it here. You get a regret. We'll see how much we regret this choice. Certainly a little bit, having drawn it here on turn one versus the Jawworm. We play two defense here, probably. So both in terms of slowed down draws and in terms of direct damage, the regret is going to cost us quite a lot in this first fight. And just having one curse in this fight can be really, really quite nasty. Let's see... 30 health. It's going to gain 5 block. It may or may not attack next turn. I'd realistically like to be able to kill it. If I play Bash Strike here, what happens? We deal 17. It goes to 13 with Vulnerable. Which would mean a guaranteed kill next turn, right? Take 12, win the fight? Or keep this going and potentially lose more if the draws are truly bad? Like, next turn we could draw a triple strike, defend, regret, and we could get attacked for 17. So if I don't play Bash Strike here, there's a risk of taking quite a bit more. I think I'm just going to take the, the the amount of damage now. Something that we can recover later. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with this choice. But no, we had to lose a lot of health in order to, uh, to get through the Jawworm. Interesting here. So we're going to be removing Regret at the store. That means we're never removing a Strike. Should we then consider Perfected Strike, which deals additional damage for all of our Strike cards? Early Perfected Strike is not something I often consider here, but this is a pretty sad early card reward otherwise. Clash is not a card I have a, a particularly high opinion of in the early game of Spire, although it actually could do well in these early Elite fights. Jonathan Wormley is no joke, that's right. I'm going to grab the uh, Perfected Strike over risking it on Clash. I think Perfected Strike performs quite consistently. We might see more copies of Perfected Strike, and if we were to do that, it would probably behoove us to pick up one or two more. That way, they both do additional damage. Pleb the Pleb says, how many elites do you usually try to take per act? If you're looking to defeat the Corrupt Heart at the end of Act 4, I recommend striving for really as many as, as you can do. Um, generally, three is about the reasonable upper limit, both in terms of what the Spire usually allows with pathing and, and in what a deck can reasonably survive. But if you can do more, then it's something to strive for. Question card helps us find more perfected strikes. Ah, but what about a pen nib here? Pen nib to double the damage of the perfected strikes. I think is quite powerful indeed. We do have to keep in mind the guardian at the end of the act, but that's a, a few problem for future Baylor. On sale, True Grit's a little tempting. I gotta say, True Grit and Perfected Strike don't exactly go all that well together because if you exhaust a strike card, then your perfected strikes will do reduced damage. That said, I'll still probably buy it, because I think it is good here. Instead of a potion. And we're hopefully getting potions from these combats. So, currently our perfected strikes deal 20 damage. Enough to chop a louse in two. Get destroyed, Lousertons. And ideally we want to win in such a way that 
Pendib is set up in this fight, so I think Pendib 4 is actually the number to strive for here. Try to win the next fight in like 5 attacks. Is Rage a good complement to a Perfected Strike build? I don't know. I do theoretically want some blocks for Guardian, but I don't know if this is the way to go. The problem is the Perfected Strikes are very expensive, so I'm realistically only playing like 1 or 2 attacks on a turn. But that would still be 6 block for 0 energy, which is pretty good. Enrique K says, is restarting on the table to put a run out of its misery? You'll almost never see me do this on the stream because even miserable runs can can become successful runs. Um, but for your own gameplay, I, I, I wouldn't put it out of the, the reach of reason. Sometimes you, you just really don't want to interact with the game in its current state. And there's nothing wrong with choosing to start a new run and try something different. Sometimes you want to put a, a winning run out of its misery, because you're like, I've won in this way before, and I don't feel like carrying, going through the motions of finishing it up. Hmm. On one hand, I think this rage could mitigate a lot of damage. On the other hand, I'm worried about it slowing down our draws. Ace Tyra, did you know that the Ironclad gives lectures on how to improve your strike cards? To learn how, you'll have to attend his perfect TED Talk. Alright, I'm out of here. Raid sure would be nice here, I gotta say. Is this ever triple defend? That actually feels like the most reasonable line. I could go perfected strike and defend, take seven. We take three with triple defend here. And we're probably not gonna get attacked again. Probably not. I think we'll draw a true grit perfected strike if we do. Hmm. Double twelves, huh? Probably not, he says. Okay, so next turn we perfected strike the small one. So put the strike here. Blah. Relentless aggression from the slimes. Please cease your assault, sir. Uh, do I want seven or eight? I think I want eight for my pen nib here. Flex Potion, that's pretty good against an Elite, and a Pommel Strike. Deals 9 and draws a card, an excellent complement to Perfected Strikes. I think this is one of Ironclad's best commons already, so I'm very happy to pick it up. Armament's also maybe worth considering here. It's Block, which will help against our Guardian boss, and can upgrade other cards. But currently we're worried with uh, what can get us through this Elite fight and the Burning Elite fight. And the answer is more powerful Perfected Strikes. And Pendib. Ooh, remove transform upgrade. I know how to blap some elites. It's upgrade perfected strike. Upgrade perfected strike. That's how. Kerblam. Welcome to Chop Town. Cool, and we block pretty well during the first attack cycle here. Double defend there, double defend True Grit here. We do lose a strike, but we should be able to kill before it attacks us a second time here. Uh, I'm actually not going to play Pommel Strike. We want to go Perfected Strike, Strike. That way we're guaranteed to be able to play this Perfected Strike next turn. If I play the Pommel Strike, there's a 1 in 4 chance we draw this Perfected Strike. And then I brick the draw and we take another hit. 
So don't be the fool that plays Perfected Strike here, because one in four times you'll be punished for it. Uh, and then we want to play Strike now, right? Before I play this. Preserved Insect means future elites have less health, and what's that? A fiend fire. Who needs fiend fire when you can get more copies of Perfected Strike? Let's do it. This is happening now, Twitch chat. Ptor impersonation stream. Go. I could remove a card at that merchant, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to go to a merchant. Slime goop, though. That's good reason. Delicious. Regal Pillow definitely might see some use this run. I'll pick it up. And a card remove. Do I dare lose a regular strike here? Seven health is actually a little scary to lose. Yes, I do think I lose a regular strike, even though this is a perfected strike build of sorts at the moment. Uh, we still want to get rid of these basic strike cards because they are such useless draws. We will be able to add, continually add more strikes as we see them. Wait, what do you mean requires a card with 10 or more damage? D <laughs> these don't count? <laughs> I actually never noticed that. Hmm. That's cool. Bug report. Hello? <laughs> I mean, it does say six damage on them right now, right? Oh, because, because here... Here outside of combat, we have zero strikes because there, there is no draw, discard, pile, or hand. So there, there are only six damage currently. And only once combat begins does their damage grow. That's funny. Still removing that. I would have been so mad if, if all of them had 33. <laughs> that we just removed a strike and this does three less damage. But no, it's, it perfectly kills you, so... Get him. Block for five. Sort this one out next turn. The other one. Oh god, they attack for 12. They're so angry. Dear sentries, why are you so angry? Sincerely, Bela Lord. Go. Protected strike, pulse strike. Chonk. Bronze Scales, an Emerald Key. Should definitely consider Thunderclap as a perfected strike counterpart. Currently, we don't have a good way to get Vulnerable down for the perfected strikes to do their enormous damage. It's also a nice card with Pen Nib to uh, let us increment by one. I'm going to pick this up. Thunder Strike! Thunderclap. Thunderbonk, go! Um, and I'd like to set up Pennib as much as possible this fight. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. I guess I'm going to go Strike, Strike, True Grit. See how this goes. It's a, a, an objectively worse line for the fight, but I wanted the possibility of making the Pennib into a higher number here. Um... Is it worth taking a little bit of damage to increment the pendant more? Yes, I think it is, actually. Let's go defend, defend, pummel here. Take one, on purpose. And then we can go strike, strike. Strike. Okay. I think that's going to work out a bit better. Wild Strike does say strike in the text. However, I don't trust it. Do not trust it one bit. I'd much rather have a Pommel Strike or maybe a Twin Strike. 
or no strike at all, really. Might use Strength Potion against Guardian. Let's take the Attack Potion here with the Pen Nib. He's so small. Look at the cute little knob. Unfortunately, I drew all three perfected strikes on turn one for some reason. So, attack potion to kill here, or I do some other stuff. Probably just use the attack potion. Um, bash, and then whatever the attack potion contains will do triple damage, so even an anger off this thing would kill. I think. Uh, no, not an anger. Anger would only do 18. Um, so it has to do, like, 12. Bonk. Yeah, and we get a potion back. Boat thingy for block on turn one. That's going to be really good with the perfected strikes. Blood potion can help us get through the guardian. Do I consider a demon form here? Demon form and perfected strikes is a weird combo, but it sure smells like inevitable victory to me. It's definitely unwieldy. If we get Sneko Eye, though, it's going to be amazing. The Chaos, thank you so much for four months. The Strike Streak. Take all the bait cards. That's right, Prime. Just, just take all the weird stuff. I do like Demon Form for the Guardian fight, unironically. And I like it with um, Boat Thingy, too. Actually, I am going to pick this weird card up. This deck is definitely top-heavy at the moment, but it's also strike-heavy. Wow. These 30 damage perfected strikes making Carnage look like a fool. Yo, let's do it. Four perfected strikes. <laughs> the perfect deck. And now I think I upgrade either True Grit or Demon Form. With the Blood Potion, I don't think I have to rest here. Although resting with Regal Pillow was originally a consideration for me. I think I'm going to upgrade Demon Form here. Pommel Strike upgrade for the draw is actually not too bad either. And lo, there was a Kablam. Just lose a 50 your health, Guardian. No problem, no problem. This we just play. I don't care if we have to lose health for it. The rule with Demon Form is you just play it. That's just what you gotta do. And now this fool is going to find out. Actually, wait. Hmm. I'm the fool. It was me all along. Um, double defend here, go down to 19, or play one of the two cost attacks. Unfortunately, none of these attacks will cause the Guardian to transform, so I think we got a double defend here. We just set up a big pen nib, and we should win. I gotta do some math. What's the base damage of this gonna be? Uh, next turn we have 12 strength. So with 12 strength. Uh, how many strikes do we currently have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 6 plus 12 plus. 24. Forty-two base. So with Pennib vulnerable, that'll chop for 126 damage. And the Thunderclap is gonna do 4 plus 12, 16 damage. So we do 142 damage next turn. So we do we bling bling? Yeah, bring them below 142? Yes. That means we do the following. And I like it. Strike. Perfected strike. Pen nib to eight. Actually, wait. It's not below 100 and... Oh, uh, yeah, that is below 142, right? 
Yes. Kurt shot. Thanks, Pendid. Oh, the chonketing? I don't think double demon form is a good idea here. Speed's probably somewhat difficult to land, but uh, we can make it happen every now and then. Bean fire seems actually counterproductive. Become thick. The chonketing. I want to be chonky. And? No Steko Eye, not yet anyway. However, we're offered energy from Slaver's Caller. I actually do have a very high opinion of the Slaver's Caller and Demon Form combo specifically. Demon Form is a three energy card that you really only want to play during boss and elite fights. And uh, that's exactly where you get the extra energy with the Slaver's Caller. Maybe with a Preserved Insect, we could make a claim about the Black Star. I think that'd be a bit of a challenge. Or Runic Cube, which is card draw when we lose health. And let me assure you, we'll be losing lots of health in Act 2. So this is a lot of free card draw. Belmio says, is Perfected Strike affected by Exhausted Strikes? Yes, the current number of strikes in draw, discard, and hand are used to calculate the Perfected Strike damage. So it'll change dynamically, either down if you exhaust them, or if you make more copies mid-combat, you can make the damage go up by, like, uh, dual wielding, for example. Or Dead Branch, making random strikes. Yeah, I think the ability to play two Perfected Strikes per turn, at least during the big important fights, is going to be really nice. And I think if we're also having Preserved Insect, that means we can path max elites in Act 2 if we take the Caller here. And deliberately fight quite a few otherwise challenging encounters. Right, with Preserved Insect, um, the Perfected Strike Plus is going to one-shot a Red Slaver. And that's pretty good. Looks like we can fight... Three elites this act at maximum. That's what we'll have to do. I think they'll be pretty easy fights overall. We're also loaded, so let's spend some cash. I'm thinking a path that looks something like this. Um, two elites here, right? So we want to go through these two. Any other way to do that? I don't think so. I'm go here. Probably take a late event for a case of for chance at Colosseum or something. We get a few upgrades that are quite nice. No upgrades until later, though. Maybe we'll be using the Regal Pillow to rest. We've got extra health from the Blood Potion. I'm not too afraid here. Arthur AoE, thanks for the full year. A year of dad jokes. And since starting, have beaten all A20s. Congrats, Arthur. Aberic one thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the QZ Sub Club. A few events for hope of stuff like Necronomicon. I mean, my, my hope from events is honestly just avoid the nasty, nasty combats of Act 2. Uh, I don't think we're going to do particularly well against, for example, Shelled Parasite. Why did I say that? I don't know. Featherfall, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. And hey, Ridey, thanks for five months of support. All right, any, cho any reason to use a potion here? I don't think so. Well, the strength potion could make a difference. I'm not concerned that it will. Here, I think blocking is a trap, and I should just go Thunderclap Perfected Strike so we can kill next turn. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Alex Whirlwind Cleave. Whirlwind's not bad. I don't really think I need area damage. Fighting Collector? No, I don't think we need area damage. Not that kind, anyway. Add another Perfected Strike? Or, honestly, heal 15 is very reasonable going into this Elite Gauntlet. Any other cards that I'm desperate to see? Yeah, we do have a lot of upgrades that I'd say we we want. Don't necessarily need. Even the unupgraded Perfected Strikes are decent. A Bloodletting or a Seeing Red? Hmm. Yeah. Or a, um, a Battle Trance. Battle Trance would be very, very good. 
I've got a blood potion. Okay, let's look at cards. Power through looking okay. Disarm looking okay. There's another pummel strike. Really do like disarm. For the late game, especially. This kind of this gets our heart plan started. Helps against Awaken One, too. There is a dual wield. Dual wield's pretty hard to afford, though, right? If I had madness, maybe. I like dual wield when you're copying something that's free. But if it's like, make six energy but perfected strikes in your hand, then it's like, okay, but I don't have six energy. What do I do with that? There's a Seeing Red and a Dark Embrace. Souvenir is great for the later game. Allowing us to start combat with an Artifact Charge means that we will... not become vulnerable against Heart. Do I take a Dark Embrace? Hmm, I could consider one. It's probably unwise to ignore, actually. Probably want to remove a strike still. So if I go souvenir remove, I can only afford one of the two cards then. Dark Embrace or Seeing Red. But yes, I am going to continue to remove basic strike cards. Let's get that at Dark Embrace. I think that might be essential later on. I'm not going to miss the opportunity to take one when I'm offered it. No thanks. Ah. This could go a little awkwardly. It might be that I need to actually just take this full hit to get a kill next turn. Although it's all going to be dependent on drawing the Pummel Strike. We did draw the Pummel Strike. Good work. Havoc plus, for free, play the top card of the draw pile and exhaust it. That's a pretty spicy Havoc. Bloodletting is also not bad here. But I really like this Havoc. Whoop. Oh, that's not what I was trying to click on. Hold on, I'm going to save and quit to fix that. <laughs> I looked at chat and I slightly misplaced my click. Clearly intending to take the Havoc there. Fortunately, that is, that is what the save and quit is for, in my opinion, is genuine misclicks. Declared a strategic intent for one decision, clicked on another one. That's humanitis for you. We can fix that. This card. This is the one I want. There we go. A gremlin is madly shuffling cards on a table. Twelve cards! This one is not okay to save and quit, so please don't give me an injury, sir. Thank you. Evolve? I don't think we want an evolve. Shame we certainly don't want. Don't look at a new card unless you're willing to match the one that you have got already. Ash evolve. So there was a rare card we never saw in the bottom row. wonder what it was. Elite number one. The tiny slavers the tiniest. If only I hadn't removed strikes, this perfected strike would be lethal. Strength potion wouldn't make the difference here. It's only two more damage, right? So I could either use two perfected strikes to kill the red one, or we blindly Havoc. I could Dark Embrace before Havocing to draw a card, but then I don't have the ability to play both perfected strikes. So I think what I should do first, before we decide on any potions or anything, is just play Havoc and see what happens. All right, we hit the middle guy. I'm actually cool with killing him first. We can peace strike him. Note that our perfected strikes now do less damage because I exhausted the perfected strike with Havoc. But that's okay, we can kill him and weaken the red one. Is this the fight for the regen potion? Probably, yeah. Let's do that then. Kill that guy turn one, apparently. Kill you next, friend.
I could kill them both here, but I would like to feed. And regen. So... Won't be doing that. Good job, feed. You knew when to show up. All right, we got 13, uh, sorry, 12 out of the 15 health from the regen potion. That's pretty good. Now we have an ink bottle drawing us cards for every 10 cards played. We're offered an anger, which is interesting with pen nib ink bottle, but otherwise that's pretty good. DMND man says, if you have whirlwind and hit it with havoc, what happens? You hit with Whirlwind equal to your current energy, but you don't lose the energy. So if you have five energy and you Havoc Whirlwind, then Whirlwind hits everything five times, but you still have five energy. It's pretty good. We've also got Dark Embrace Demon Form, both of which make Anger quite a bit better. I'm going to pick up one unupgraded Anger here in Act 2. Feels like a weird time to pick it, but I do think it's quite nice. For example, it allows me to make this Perfected Strike deal double damage. Ain't that nifty. Or I can set up a double damage perfected strike for next turn. Let's actually do that. I'm going to go anger, defend, true grit here. Block as much as I can. Then pen nib this. I guess. Still wasn't that impressive. Oh well. You can't win them all. Kid. would be too much damage. 13 plus 15. 28. Good. I eat you now. Let's see. This plays the Perfected Strike and then draws a card. Am I correct? I actually need to know how this works. Yes. Plays the Perfected Strike, then draws a card. Got it. You dare attack me here. Okay, and we want the Pendib set up for the next fight if possible. Trying Perfected Strike next turn. She was not healing because not enough health was missing. So that'll do like 30 damage. Okay, this should be a kill then. Perfect. Mediocrity. Actually, Warcry Havoc is a thing. Warcry Havoc is a thing. Let's grab that Warcry. Ooh, baby. The Bonkening. We use our Strength Potion against the Book of Stabbing. Is there any need for that? Probably gonna get another potion later. Might as well, I guess. The big damage has arrived. Seems pretty unlikely I can come back to that uh, feed, but we'll do what we can. Defend or P strike here. Well, it's only damage in the draw pile. 48 health, you're losing 9, so you're going to 39. Or energy. I think we can just do 39 damage next turn. Seems pretty easy to do, actually. Hello? Oh yeah, I still can. Okay. It was a weird turn, but we got there. Sundial gives us energy when we shuffle the draw pile. I don't know if that's going to help this deck, but it might. I do like a Burning Pact. I do kind of like an Exhume. Exhume Feed, Exhume Disarm are both things. Heck, we can even Exhume our Perfected Strikes with Havoc. Curious. But Burning... Sundial definitely speaks to Burning Pact here. We can even do, like, Pommel Strike. Infinite? Can turn this into an infinite deck to win the late game? That's really funny. Okay, I'll take a burning fact. 
Definitely taking one of those exhaust energy cards. I also think there's no such thing as too much energy for this deck. So yeah, give me Sundial, give me Slaver's Collar, give me Happy Flower, give me Lantern, give me everything. All of it. Demon form or Peace Strike this fool? This should be a fairly short fight. I think we want to use Pendip, so I'm going to go with a Peace Strike here. Skip the Demon form. I think last time I skipped Demon form against Chosen, I deeply regretted it. Play Demon form. So here, Warcry allows us to put a specific card on top of the deck to be then played with Havoc. that order, though. Um, this seems bad. With extra energy next turn, and ink bottle next turn. Okay. Let's chip them both here. Okay, perfect the strike strike here, disarm here. We also draw one card. If I draw a feed, we can land the feed. Could use the Forge Potion here. Doesn't feel very necessary, though. Perfect. What about Pendib, though? Uh, I think I could have killed you, actually. Interesting. Hmm. No, that wasn't correct, I'm pretty sure. Feeding. That's fine. Completely fine. Headbutt's kind of nice with a deck like this. Also with Havoc? Yeah. Headbutt helps us set up feed more easily. Headbutt gets our key cards back, like the Burning Pact of the True Grit, more easily. And now we get to upgrade a few things. I'll probably be upgrading the True Grit... The Dark Embrace, maybe the Burning Pact. Um, do I take an Attack Potion over these two? Attack Potion seems better than Flex Potion. For this deck, specifically. Do I ever get away with upgrading Feed? I think that's unwise. I think we need to prepare for the Collector fight. Let's start with this True Good upgrade. And yeah, I'll take, I'll take one more event here. Might end up resting before Collector, using the Regal Pillow to build up a hit point buffer. I'm actually very happy to see these three. It's like a fight plus. These guys are easy to kill. My first instinct on this turn was to play Perfected Strike and then Headbutt it so that I can Havoc it. However, if I do that with Ink Bottle on 8, we actually instantly redraw the card we Headbutt. So I have to play a different card first if I want to do the Perfected Strike Havoc interaction. kind of throwing me off here. But, but yeah, we could do Strike, then Perfected Strike, Headbutt Havoc. That works fine. Take two. We could just deliberately kill Pointy, but I'd rather use the boat thingy to block. I guess I can go defend Perfected Strike, Headbutt. Let's do that. Not allowed to target um, the Havoc Perfected Strike here. Go Romeo first. Could have disarmed Pointy. Foolish. And then we don't headbutt Romeo because we don't want the Perfected Strike to potentially kill him. I guess I'll headbutt Bear. Got him. Fights an elite. 
could kill Bear or Pointy with his hand. What order do I usually kill these guys in, Kleb the Pleb says. My typical order is Romeo, then Bear, then Pointy. Though it really depends on uh, how your draws line up exactly. If you can kill Bear on turn one, I usually advocate it. But usually the goal is to kill Pointy, uh, to kill Romeo by turn two and kill Bear by turn three. Pointy is just a constant nuisance. I think I'm just going to use the attack potion to make my life really easy here. There he is. And then kind of wasting a Forge Potion, but we get four max health out of this Forge Potion. Might be spewing a bit. And yet it's so very deeply tempting here. It also sets up the Pen Nib to nine and the Ink Bottle to nine and the Happy Flower to three for this elite fight. Yeah, I'm going to go with that's actually worth it. Like, that's a lot of setup. How's it going, Blardovich? I love Slay Inspire. It's good to have you. Do we add a Heavy Blade to this deck? I don't think we do. I don't think we add any of this to this deck. And then... I could take another event, actually, but I like the fire quite a bit. We're going to upgrade... I'm thinking Dark Embrace as we go into this elite fight. And I, I'm still thinking that we're going to rest before Collector, but we'll see what our rewards are from trouncing these fools. Um, Perfected Strikes? Hello? Where'd you go? Where did you go? I guess I defend one time. Draw not an attack card. Bummer. So we pen nib bash the clapper headbutt. Blech. Bummer. I don't think any of this adds up to a kill, right? We can do 16 plus 6 plus 13. Which is 35. <laughs> uh, or we can do 18 plus 4 plus 12, which I don't think is enough either. 34, yeah, if we do... Just uh, headbutt first. We could save the pen nib entirely. Just go defend and disarm. Nah, it can't be worth it. Compared to, like, killing him with thorns. He'll die to thorns, right? Not too bad. But we do lose a little bit more health this turn for, for taking that line. But yeah, no. We're gonna... Actually, how much is it if I thunderclap first? We do 8, 12, 13, 33. But I do more to the others. Nah, it's not worth it. Just one forge potion away. Yeah, the I, I mean, that's the price of using that forge potion in the way that I did. We have no way to enhance this turn then. That said, I don't regret at all how I use the forge potion. Truly don't. Bye. I'm gonna eat this guy. What's gonna happen? Um, 
Let's do it, and then War Cry if we draw the feed. Put that on top. Easy peasy. Might as well play this for one more ink bottle charge first. Can't play either of these without killing him. Okay, seeing red belongs in the deck. We have Dark Embrace. It's three ish energy. And yeah, with no potions, I think it is wise to go to essentially full health before Collector. Um, we're going to rely on the Demon Form and the Dark Embrace to really carry this fight, but I think we're going to be taking quite a bit of damage. That said, turn one Demon Form is going to make this quite a bit easier. 50 damage. We've even got uh, Sundial almost set up here. So I think I should clap a minion. We can Burning Pact first. Even though it does lower the damage of the Perfected Strike a bit. It still kills a minion in one hit. So we'll kill that one. Lower the incoming damage. And lose this defend too. This is the part that hurts. I think bash. Thankfully, that's a clean kill, so I don't have to play the feed here. Although, maybe I should consider it. Definitely want to play that. Uh, you're vulnerable next turn as well, Collector. We're immune to the weaken, but we are otherwise going to get hurt pretty bad here. I think the line is this. Headbutt, Havoc, War Cry, put Perfected Strike on top, play Dark Embrace, play Havoc, hit that Perfected Strike for free, play the other one for normal price. You get both in play that way. Havoc's pretty cool. Havoc is here again. I don't know if I want to headbutt a particular card this time. We clearly need to win by the end of next turn. So I think I just Havoc blindly? Do I Havoc blindly with Pen Nib on 9? Yes, I think that's what I do. I Thunderclap Anger. And with, head, uh, with uh, Pen Nib on 9, we play Havoc. That way, if I hit a Perfected Strike, we double it, and if I hit a regular card, I mean, that's basically what I've got in my hand anyway. Can we feed? It's going to depend on the Pen Nib and the Havoc here. Actually, wait. Can I feed without even... Hold on. We have a lot of damage. This will do 60-something. Maybe I can just feed without even um, relying on Havoc, right? We Anger, T-Clap, Headbutt, Feed. All right, I was overthinking that. GG. GG. Tasty. It's going to be an impervious from me, dog. Big block. Very nice for the late game. Nom. Actually, speaking of, speaking of tea, what is the Ironclad's favorite kind of tea? Brutality. Maybe impervious. Hmm. I wish this also transformed my perfected strikes, you know? I did say there was no such thing as too much energy in this deck. We already have an upgraded demon form. What if we go Fusion Hammer here? Fusion Hammer Regal Pillow means we ha have to sleep at every rest site for enormous amounts of health. It's actually not bad. I come up with these on the spot, Club the Pleb. I blame watching too many episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway as a child. It twisted me permanently, and now I'm like this. Energy equals good. Yeah, I don't I don't really like the Pandora's box. 
We've been keeping the defense because I still have faith that they'll pay off with uh, corruption or something similar later. They're, they're easy exhaust targets. Generally speaking, it's easier to exhaust defense than it is to exhaust strikes. There's cards like Second Wind and Sever Soul that only target non-attack cards. <laughs> Colin has definitely strained a few puns in his day, you know? Alright, I like a, a low rest site act here. Theoretically, we shouldn't need any assistance from the fusion hammer. Or from the, the, the sleeping. But if we need to sleep, we can sleep, you know? I guess I'm going through this shop regardless. That means I don't want to go to this shop. Unless I'm trying to do some contrived remove two nonsense, but I'm not trying to do that. So let's go this way. Take a few events. Maybe get ourselves a mind bloom. Although I certainly wouldn't upgrade all of my cards. I would like some rare relics. And I would like to feed. Spiker problem here. Oh dear. More than a bit. We're having a full on crisis. Okay, all's well. Havoc drew itself. It was incredible. Flame barrier is not too bad. We're lacking good block cards. I'll take that. Hiya! Hiya again! You're next, bud, kid, Ted. Get killed. I'm the blocking lord. You can do nothing before me, except watch me slowly diminish the number of strikes in this deck until there are none remaining. You're wondering what happened. Where did it all go wrong? started when we missed our Dark Embrace. Alright, I'm gonna lose the feed for this fight. This fight is getting out of control, and I don't like it. Bottom, bottom de decking Dark Embrace in any fight is gonna give us trouble. This one especially, I think. This could be an exemplar of how this deck can operate in longer combats. Skip the anger too. Get this boot valued. Oh no. Where did I go wrong? Nowhere. That's where. Nowhere. Fire potion to end this fight and end our misery here? Let's do it. Please, spare me from this nonsense. This horrible nonsense. And send me somewhere else. 
clothesline. Currently lacking any good source of weakness, we'd really prefer a shockwave or an intimidate, but clothesline could be where it has to be. This is the... Well, it's upgraded and I have a fusion hammer. I'm going to have to take that. All right, buddy. What you got? It's time to spin the wheel. And the wheel says... It's curse time! Th thanks for that. Just what I wanted. Oh, and a merchant to remove the curse. And a second Dark Embrace. You know, things might be looking up, actually. Got another thing coming up later. I could buy a potion for now times. Liquid Memories is pretty good. I'm gonna buy that. Renwood, good to see ya. Would you like a war cry? Have a war cry, friend. Thanks for the bag of preparation. Now I'm on top of things. Here we go. Tiny Reptomancer, no problem. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just play this. Good hit. Of course, this gets us attacked this turn. And I've drawn Bupkis. Curses. So, about that Liquid Memories. What's the line here? And I'm currently on four. No chance to kill the Repto. Kill that dagger. Technically, I could kill both daggers here, but then we're still taking an absolute oodle of damage. It's a deck kind of falling off. It It's in a transitory phase is what's happening. It can get stronger, but currently it's getting weaker as we exhaust our cards. Don't think we die here. No way. Just need to figure out what we're playing. Um, so I'd, I'd like to play that Dark Embrace. I don't think it's going to happen. So we should get back either the Burning Pact or... Actually, Clothesline's pretty decent, too. There's a reason I'm healing next floor. Burning Pack draws us through a lot of this nonsense. There's an Impervious and a Seeing Red in the draw pile. Yeah, I think I want Burning Pact. Okay, that looked a bit better. Not a lot, but a little bit. Kill both daggers, just take the 16 by 2. Feels pretty reasonable, actually. No daggers get to live today. Let's try and play that perfected strike. Um, if I don't get the energy from Sundial now, the Ascender's Bane is going to waste it. Hmm. Wasted it is. Fair enough. But I think we're good, right? We just eat her now? Magic Flower. Healing is more effective during combats. is going to be pretty sweet. We're offered Power Through Plus, Clash Plus, or Disarm. 
Okay, we're starting to head in the right direction here. I'm thinking second disarm over the power throw, because we don't have a reliable way to deal with the wounds. And I have two dark embraces. And I have 90 hit points. Seems pretty good. We might actually be able to show off our late game scaling versus the giant head here. Assuming the perfected strikes don't just chop him to pieces instantly. Which it doesn't look like they're going to. Um, am I using another potion here? I kind of doubt it. Potion. Wow. I gotta do it to me dirty like that game. But why though? We got bonus healing, it's fine. Too late for molten egg, sorry. Toasty. I'd like to eat one of these. Although you're dying to flame barriers, so not happening. Spirit Guardian, if we can. Let's go. Embrace, defend, defend. Ah, this wrong ish. There we go. Plus 15. Not quite enough. It's 24. That's too much. Happily take a second impervious here. Um, and I want events over combats. Is that true? Kind of want combats right now. We'd like more. I spent all my money anyway, right? We should go this way for now. Maybe even avoid the shop entirely, go for another heal. Combats are potentially health, but more importantly for me right now, combats are potions. Brace or the weaken. Weaken's pretty important here. Hmm. Demon form on the bottom? Yeah, havoc that. Alright, not the greatest turn. But not bad.
There's Intimidate. I've got two Dark Embraces. I think that's actually pretty good. Zero cost exhaust. Fighting Nemesis. Dennis the Nemesis. Good hit. Stay vulnerable, my friend. Please don't do that attack. Unless I draw impervious, in which case, knock yourself out. Just have fun, you know? I'm gonna headbutt feed. I really doubt I can play it, but just in case, I can. Too many burns, sir. Oh, God. He's doing that thing where he only attacks for 41 or puts burns in the deck. Terrifying. You have to stop, sir. Feed, all will be well. Wait, I never played, uh... Demon form. Flame barrier, stop him! Good job. Good work. Hummel kind of goes with double dark embrace, but... I don't think it really does. We got angers for that. Feels like going to another shop is worthless. Let's let's go to full health before the uh, boss gauntlet, I guess. Ray Del Bono cutie alert. Welcome, welcome to the ch list of channel cuties. Thank you for spending so much time in the channel as to accumulate the required half mil channel points. I'll get you out of that. Added to that list below the stream right now, where you shall stay forevermore. Thank you. Show your waffles in chat, Twitch chat, let's flood. Flood the chat room in celebration of a new channel Q tier. there. And we're facing down a Writhing Mass, which looks like a bit of a challenging opponent. Writhing Mass does something different every turn and even changes their intent when attacked, which can make this fight a little tricky to you deal with. My advice for this fight is don't attack the Writhing Mass if it's already performing an intent you're okay with. This one very much not an intent we're okay with. We have to change this to really anything else. That's good. That's great, in fact. The swirling debuff intent indicates a permanent curse addition, and that's the big one to avoid most of the time. So I can headbutt True Grit. Draw it with Defend. Get rid of Thunderclap here. Again. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think hopefully the, the transitory nature of the deck is now becoming apparent as the perfected strikes are falling off. The Dark Embraces and now our Relics, the Sundial, are going to start to pop off. And we're able to just draw so many cards that we can do pretty much anything we want. Meanwhile, the Demon Form slowly puts in work, too. Delicious. Lexer's a really good potion here. Sentinel could be nice for more energy. Shrug could be part of our late game plan, maybe. We don't have a Pummel Strike Plus, do we? But Shrug Pummel is still pretty good loop. Pick one Shrug. We have to sleep here for full health. All right, I feel pretty good going into the end game bosses here. We have a long term plan for most of these fights. Uh, we even drew Demon Form turn one against Donu Deka here. Ooh, do I headbutt that True Grit and exhaust two cards here? Let's do it. True Grit the Strike. Headbutt the True Grit. Havoc the True Grit. Although that deletes the True Grit, huh? Hmm. What exactly is it I'm looking to accomplish here? Good question. Good question. Alright, it's Donu making vulnerable time. You betting days, they only draw me more cards. Fools. Fools. Um, I want this anger to duplicate, don't I? Yes. Who's a defense? Two energy when I play Pummel Strike. Let's do it now. Take a bit here. in the draw pile. Don't really want to randomly play it, but if we do, then that's okay. And so it is. Fair enough. I'm supposed to do that to Donu, actually, but... There we are. Take a bit more damage to win this fight more decisively? Seems wise. Here, let's get that bash down. Kill Donu this turn. But yeah, we did, alas, miss our feed there. It's truly a shame. Next up, Time Eater. Time Eater shouldn't be too hard either, actually. Similar premise for this fight. We exhaust the small cards and play the big ones. Uh, particularly Demon Form, wherever that shows up. Probably should have played Intimidate there, actually. There's Demon Form. How you doing, Demon Form? Good to see you. All right, once we have the Dark Embraces down as well, this should be pretty much in hand. I don't feel the need to bash or Perfected Strike. I'm just going to let the turn pass. There's Dark Embrace number one. Probably don't want to do a whole lot of Havoking in this fight. 
as uh, that is two card plays, although sometimes that's a good thing. For example, here, I'll play Havoc. Since I needed two cards to end the turn. Shame to see Flame Barrier go there, but that's all right. I'll have it here as well. Draw a bunch of stuff. Three cards to end the turn. Let's go Slime Defend, or Slime Feed? Slime Defend. Don't want to leave Time Eater's counter at the wrong number, or, or else. You have a bad time. Defends are pretty useless. Um, slimed activates the sundial so I can play the impervious. We're good. Cry Havoc. Let's whip, slip the clothesline of war. Two more cards. One, two. Alright, this is the perfect time to put Time Eater below half health. Turn after Time Eater drops below half, they will heal back to half HP. Might be able to set up a kill or something. Shrug. Let's get fancy here. And feed. I can't do this. But I could kill Time Eater right now. I'm just choosing not to. Don't know if that was wise, but here we are. Delicious. Simply delicious. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this formerly perfected strike deck, now a c completely different kind of beast? How curious this transformation has been. Steven Easy, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Goozy Sub Club. Good to have you. Might have been nice to set up the relics in addition to, or maybe instead of the feed, but here we are. Bummer. This ain't a charity, though. Cool with the card removed, though. 
Crusher says, I still don't understand how this deck works. It's working off the power of the exhaust effect. Exhaust allows this deck to destroy all of the basic cards, and in fact, all of the cards that don't perform their optimal function in any particular combat, while also allowing us enormous amounts of card draw. So the idea is we create a card draw engine that lets us draw and play way more cards than we'd usually be able to do. I think I might remove one more strike to get us a little bit quicker started here. Because we have a sundial, it really does behoove us to... Man, I do wish I had that second win after all, or that power through. I'm curious how we're going to be able to deal with uh, Spire Spear and Spire Shield, though. I think they're going to be real big trouble unless I draw one or both Dark Embraces really early. I suppose having Demon Form early helps. But it's really the Dark Embraces I care more about, actually. Havoc now, or Burning Pact and then Havoc? There's no information on which to make that decision. Burning Pact makes me more likely to draw the Dark Embrace, and then the Havoc's better. Burning Pact first. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Dark Embrace, Seeing Red, Havoc. Ooh. Okay, forget the Demon Form. It's, I think the second uh, Dark Embrace is actually the more important thing to put in play here. I mean it. Does the shield always attack turn one on A20? No, it's a 50-50 chance whether the shield attacks or blocks on this turn. Whatever they do, uh, whatever they don't do this turn is what they do on the next turn. Unfortunately, we broke the Art of War. That's okay. That's probably going to be my elixir. For so many reasons. Can exhaust a lot of cards right now. This is also very good in the heart fight, is the thing. But I feel like I need the help more in this fight. And we can just use our health and... In the, in the heart fight, especially with Souvenir. So I'm going to exhaust any number of cards in my hand, and it's going to be everything except True Grit Disarm. I'm going to exhaust five cards, draw ten. Well, actually just eight. And get most of the draw pile into my hand immediately. I guess we could True Grit first, and then potentially exhaust even more cards. Let's do that. Do I want to headbutt anything? Not really. Is already gone because they played Thunderclap. This goes to six by four, which we can still tank. I think I'd like to clothesline the shield here to make sure it's weak next turn. Tremendous Thorns damage back, breaking through the block almost. Still not quite good enough, though. If only we had a Havoc. Who's the Bash? Yeah. Here, I'll take the Art of War energy. Just take one. Bummer. 
Not playing Demon Form feels like it might have been a bit of a mistake here. Let's see. Can't do a whole lot of damage with my weak ass pendipped cards anymore. I'm gonna use this. That's pretty essential, actually. Form hello? Come on. I just want to be your friend, Demon Form. I guess I don't need Demon Form, huh? I'll just do this. Uh, 13 plus 7. We're just one a little bit short, a little bit short. Bummer. Red Skull and five more Max L. And an Evolve? Actually, Evolve seems kind of like a big deal here. Or another Perfected Strike Plus. But I think it's a Evolve, for sure, to help us with card draw in the hard fight. Whenever we draw a status card... Draw a card. So the plan against the heart is to... Use the Exhaust Synergies to just draw the same handful of good cards over and over again. We need to get the Demon Form down early. Um... But I don't know that I can guarantee that. We do at least draw the Evolve turn one, so that's going to help with the status is originally. Let's draw one more with Pommel. I know this cost me the Art of War energy, but I'll probably play a few attacks this turn anyway. I'm just going to play the Feed to get rid of it, too. Unless, unless I draw a Demon Form, which I don't. So we'll go Feed, Evolve. Strike Defend. I could trigger one of these cards, but I don't want to hit the Impervious. So yeah, I think just Strike Defend here. Pretty bad turn one, all things considered. Is there any reason to hold this potion? Yes! Because we get Magic Flower. Um, this will heal me for eight when I drink it, even though it only gives me five max health. So I should wait until I'm no longer full health to drink this potion to get a bit more HP. Okay, Impervious is here. We could even headbutt Havoc the second Impervious if I felt it necessary. It does block for a lot this turn. And it draws us deeper into the deck. That's pretty good. So look at this, we, we drink the fruit juice, we go to 101 max health, 93 plus 5 is 98, but we're instead going to go to 101 out of 108 here, healing for 8. Or 101 out of 111, excuse me. Healed for 8. Same dealio there. Be weakened, my friend. Could actually leave the disarm for future cycles seem reasonable. At the same time, saving health now seems reasonable. Drawing two cards now seems even better. Wait. Cool. Hmm. This has already been played. Okay. We'll be back for that. need that demon form in play though. I'm gonna stop there for a moment. Mm, 
There we go. So I'm just going to tank most of this hit, unfortunately. Maybe these angers just... No. Aha, and we did that so that we could disarm here. Flame Barrier is going to chip in too. Thanks, Evolve. Get rid of that. Get rid of literally anything in my hand. Good work. 48 damage. Have some damage, friends. to Havoc random stuff, so we should headbutt Havoc. Although I think I trigger it first. We're at a peace ride, perfect. Definitely crucial that we exhaust a few more cards if we want this to survive for much longer. I think I can play too many of these angers right now. Um, we can never prevent the heart from attacking us two more times. We have to survive both of the next attacks. Thankfully, that's exactly as long as our weekend will last. So I think we leave Ink Bottle Sundial to do stuff next turn. Okay, another great turn to have drawn the Flame Barrier. Let's go Shrug. Burning Pact Perfected Strike here. True Grit. These defends. Two more, three more. Shoot. And then what? Flame Barrier, then True Grit. True Grit gets rid of Headbutt. Havoc hits Anger. We get two more energy back. Now I can play Trugit again. Got two more cards. Havoc's gonna hit something important, but I feel like that doesn't matter as much. Shrug. And now I can True Grit. This last perfected strike. Draw three again. Oh, I think we might be there. Hmm. If I Havoc that uh, True Grit, we're in trouble though. To do damage to the heart. So I think I play Anger, Anger, Havoc. Or maybe just Anger, Havoc. Oh, anger, Havoc. Okay, get rid of... The wound's actually helping. Get rid of Bash here. Flame Barrier a second time. Havoc the Flame Barrier. So now we do 12 return damage. Sundial activates again. Sundial procs. <laughs> Should have thunderclapped earlier in the turn, actually. Problem is, I'm running out of cards, as you can see.
Okay, we've capped on damage, though, so that's all we do here. Wait, how do I live this? Good question. I think I just spammed True Grit, right? That's how I live this. Gotta generate nine block. Just have to survive this. Can't do any more damage this turn. Because the heart has been capped. So any any damage we try to do this turn is ignored. Uh, and there's one anger in the discard files. Let's true grit, draw two. Then true grit draws true grit. Then True Grit draws True Grit again. If I have to play Anger, Anger True Grit is a net gain of one. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, infinite? Question mark? Definitely question mark. Alright, there needs to be another anger. Can't play this again without playing anger first. Alright. So we go Anger, take three damage. True Grit. Anger. Anger. True Grit. Anger. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.